So in this video, we're going to be looking inside the atom at the parts that make it up. Now, I'm a physics teacher, but a lot of this content you're going to be learning in your chemistry lesson, so I've got a real-life chemist here to help me out. I am a real-life chemist. I'm Primrose Kitten. So um, I'm going to be talking about the physics side and the way that we deal with it in GCSE physics. Uh, I'll be talking about the chemistry side. So uh, do you want to kick off what's inside the atom? Inside the atom we have a couple of different regions. We have a very very dense region in the middle which is full of protons and another thing we have some neutrons. Now the important thing is that these things aren't actually, they don't really have a colour, they're not red or blue or green or yellow, they're actually smaller than the wavelength of light so we can't see them directly. But what we do in physics is we try and use a model to uh, actually explain the world around us. Now the model that a lot of you might draw uh, in your school labs is maybe just a load of circles. I'm going to be using, as I go into other videos, um, bits of Lego and all I'm using is a yellow block of Lego to be a proton and I'm using a red block of Lego to be a neutron. So these are the two particles that we have inside the nucleus of an atom. And this bit here, where all the mass is, this is the nucleus. Now, those of you paying attention might have noticed that I've just drawn a circle around the nucleus. In this circle around the nucleus live some electrons. And for my videos, what I'm using are these smaller grey things to be my electrons. Again, they don't really have this colour. They're not really made out of Lego. But this is just a way that I can model the world around us. So in the next few videos, I'm going to be using a lot of Lego to explain the atomic model and the nuclear model of the atom. In the first energy shell, we can fit two electrons. And then in the next energy shell, we can fit eight electrons. So how does that link to chemistry and the work that you're doing with bonding and so on and the behaviour of different elements? An element will always want to have a full outer shell. So this element will always want to have eight electrons on the outside. Which means if it's a group seven element and has seven electrons on the outer shell, it will always try and bond with something so that it gains that extra electron. Or if it's a group 1 element and it only has one electron on its outer shell, if I draw a third shell in there, it will try and lose that electron so that it drops down and has this as a full outer shell. So it gets a little bit complicated. Luckily in physics we don't really need to know too much about that. We need to know that there are electrons in distinct shells around the outside of the nucleus. We also need to know that actually sometimes these electrons can jump from one shell to another. So this is why Lego is really useful as a model, because we can actually move it from one shell to the other. So, for example, it might uh, absorb some energy and it might jump up to an outer shell. And then as it loses energy, it then gives out some electromagnetic radiation. But apart from that, the model that we use in physics is pretty straightforward. We don't really need to think about the chemical properties of different elements. And actually what we're more interested in often is the very inside part, the nucleus.